Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you are new or welcome back if you are back. If you are new, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and if you're back, welcome back. Either way, I'm super happy you're here with me today. I'm super excited about today's video because it is my favorite season and to celebrate it, I am continuing this little series of vlogs where I get to complete all these things on my autumn wish list or bucket list, whatever you want to call it. I've never been to an apple orchard and it's been a dream of mine, so Cage and I decided to go ahead and drive six hours away from our house to go camping and apple picking and we had quite some misadventures getting there, but we did manage and it was incredible. There was so much rain and so much fog. We saw pumpkin patches and corn mazes and visited like a little haunted house. We had our bonfire and roasted marshmallows. It was a complete dream and just the complete perfect continuation of this spooky season. The leaves are changing a little bit more and I can just tell that the season is just about here. I absolutely can't wait. And if you are interested in coming along with me on this very cozy, sort of spooky little autumn vlog, then please keep on watching. One of the items on my fall wish list was to make an autumn playlist. I kind of do this every year regardless, but depending on what music I'm into at the time, it changes. This year, I did a bunch of super vintage nostalgic autumn soundtracks, tons of stuff from the 20s, from the 50s, things that sound like they would be played in jazz clubs and on old radios. Cage and I both love spooky vintage music. It felt really incredible to listen to the CD on our drive and know that some of the songs were recorded in like 1910. It just feels so special. I love to make physical CD playlists and it just helps because uh, my car has a CD player. <laughs> I stickered this and decorated it a lot. I entitled this uh, Cajun Buns Super Awesome and Spooky Road Trip Playlist, <laughs> but it's all just vintage Halloween music. I'll link it on um, Spotify since I uploaded it there as well, and it's kind of extended since I can only fit like 20 songs on the CD. <laughs> anyway, once our CD was ready to go, we were good to go with that as well as some spooky audiobooks. We loaded everything up into my little green Subaru and we were on the road. Already the weather is damp and rainy and foggy. There's all this smoke from forest fires, which obviously isn't great, but creates this kind of eerie atmosphere over everything that we drive over. The residual rain in the air makes everything look more saturated. There's something about the autumn and just after or before it rains where all the colors just look so much deeper and darker. It's one of my absolute favorite things. The sunlight streaming through the clouds was just an absolute dream to drive through. And there's just something so special about waking up at like 6 a.m. to go driving with your coffee and your audiobooks and your spooky vintage music playing. We stopped to do geocaching and look at all sorts of different spots off the highway, especially because Cage wanted to forage for all his creations that he makes and his spider habitat that he is <laughs> creating soon. The kind of first significant spot we made was at this place called Ghost Lake, which very appropriate spooky name. There was a family of ducks and just an incredibly expansive body of water. We were the only ones out there and it just felt abandoned and perfect with the crisp morning air and seeing the leaves starting to change around us. The further west we went, the more you could see the autumn crawling in and this was just like my first little taste of it and it felt so special. We watched the ducks looked at the leaves, and spent some time walking around and exploring the lake and the little surrounding forest near it. Seeing the leaves beginning to finally properly turn yellow absolutely makes my heart just feel like it's home. I am such an autumn person. It just, there's something so magical about this season and I feel so lucky that I get to experience it. It felt like we were in a fairy tale or something. 
just off the highway with occasional trucks and cars zooming past, but mostly it was just me and Cage, and it felt really like a special, somber way to start our spooky road trip morning. Once we were finished up there, it was back on the road on the way to our destination. We stopped though at little spots off the highway like we love to do. Every time there's little turnouts with bridges and lookout points, we adore to just spend a moment to stretch our legs and see if anything else is changing color. I love road trips for just seeing things that you normally wouldn't pay attention to if they were in your hometown, but when you stop to them, they just feel extra special. The mountains are one of my favorite things about getting to drive out on these road trips with Cage. They feel so powerful, and while they're not quite yet yellow and red and looking like they're on fire, I just can't wait to see that too. We saw that there was a road called Cemetery Road, and it was completely dirt and abandoned, but we figured that maybe there would be a graveyard at the end of it, so we decided to drive up and explore it. After like 15 minutes, we thought it would be a dead end, but we ended up persevering anyway, and it ended up taking us to this really wonderful little spot between the train track, a lake, and a tiny cemetery off the highway. It was a really special spot to do a little bit of foraging and exploring. A lot of the plants were beginning to dry out naturally from the summer and turn into like all their gorgeous autumn dried out colors and it just felt really special to say hello to them and collect them. The cemetery was extremely small and tucked away. A lot of the headstones were wooden crosses but there were a couple that were made of stone. A lot of them had the same design with these hands holding each other and it was a really beautiful, serene spot. The sunlight shining through the trees felt incredibly magical, and the dirt path was covered in orange pine needles, feeling like the autumn was just, you know, saying hello. We found that this cemetery was in sort of an abandoned little town that had been evacuated when the train had, had finished being built there, and the cemetery was one of the few things that remained as a lot of the other buildings had been like just lifted up and moved. As usual in old cemeteries, there were gates around a lot of the very ancient gravestones. The plant life in the cemetery was also going through its own cycle of life and death, and it's always one of the most beautiful things to see, all of the different ways that the leaves can change colors. When we were finished in there, we crossed the train tracks and visited all of the autumnal leaves and plants that were close by. Things were turning orange, golden, gray. We had a basket so Cage could do some foraging and collect all of the plants that he wanted for his future art projects and enclosures. The train track was beautiful and empty and there's always something that feels so spooky about old trains to me. Getting to walk through the crunching leaves felt absolutely incredible and it felt really good to finally get a proper autumn forage in. We didn't see a single person out there, it was just us and the water beside us that we could like hear running, all the leaves changing. Cage found a lot of wonderful drying plants out all around us. I found a big bush of juniper berries. I like to put juniper in my olive oil. And when we were on our way out, we saw this little quail or grouse or pheasant. We found this abandoned building and wanted to explore it until we found out that it was not as abandoned as it had appeared. There were definitely people in there um, in trucks doing some work or something, so we skedaddled quite quick and we're out of there and back on the road to our destination. We couldn't help stopping on our drive at just places where the nature looked like an absolute alien planet. This stop was off the highway just at a weird turnout and all these trees were like bare at the bottom but full at the top. There was fireweeds and nettles and all these different types of cedars. The smell of cedar was incredibly strong in the air and all the fireweeds were like covered in this weird white substance that was like spiderwebs or something. 
Anyway, then it was back on the road, and our next destination was a ghost town. I had wanted to stop on one as part of my September wish list, but also Cage and I have driven by this one before, and he's expressed interest in stopping, and we just hadn't had the time before. So it's this really enormous place called Three Mile Gap. There's all these old buildings, and next to it is this big hotel. All the red building is the hotel, and all the brown buildings are the ghost towns where there is sort of diorama set up with mannequins and little scenes of everyday life that just look frozen in time. There was this old church, which was one of my favorite spots to go because it was actually transferred from the graveyard we had been visiting. It was the church that was by the Donaldson Cemetery that we had seen earlier that day, and it had been uprooted and supplanted here. <laughs> So that was just really wild to see. Behind the church, it had its own sort of makeshift cemetery that I believe was just sort of made up as it had kind of Halloween-y looking decor. It was pretty cute and my favorite thing ever was this giant coffin that they had. I was obsessed, so cool. Um, there was this really nice couple that offered to take a picture of me and Cage in it. There was moss growing on the roof, one of my favorite things about British Columbia and the weather and the humidity there. And then there were these teeny tiny coffins. Cage wanted a picture in one, though he hardly fit. I love plant archways and there was a multitude of them there. By the cemetery there were all these kind of interesting skulls and mirrors, blackened roses and a little garden. It was my favorite. The whole town itself was super interesting. Cage loves these kind of historic -y sort of museums, and the fact that it was a ghost town was just so special. Like, everyone just up and left, and all that was left was these weird, creepy mannequins. The whole place felt like it would have been a perfect setting for a horror movie. I'll point out specific spots that I think would be extra appropriate, but the whole thing was just super perfect. Like, hello, this? It's like a blacksmith shop. Could you not see Texas Chainsaw Massacre being set here? I, I think it would be perfect. One of my favorite things about lots of the buildings was that below there was a shop and above there was a sort of little lofty apartment where people could live. It reminds me of where Cage and I used to live in an apartment above sort of shops. There were some new things since the last time I visited it's like this fortune-telling hut and a big saloon with a very historically accurate dressed dancer up top. Very weird taxidermy where all the eyes were gone. Part of the ghost town is a town, but I think a big attraction of this place is that they have this whole section that is filled with old trains. And I feel like the old trains are almost creepier and more haunted seeming than the old buildings themselves. Granted, some of them are ridiculously fancy, like there's trains that the queen or the prime minister would have traveled in with like bathtubs and just all these ridiculous things built in. The best train, of course, was the haunted train, though I was so excited that it was open because one of the things on my Halloween wish list was to go through a haunted house. I wasn't expecting a haunted train, but it was so good. You think you're special because you're human. You just want me for my demons to use. They're not really very human. They're building a more powerful demon. <laughs> okay, I'm scared. Go ahead. <laughs> you lead. So I'm really bad for jump scares and get pretty spooked easily by that kind of thing. But I had a load of fun in the train. I just love getting to see the different dioramas that people will set up and all the super cheesy spooky Halloween decorations is one of my absolute favorite parts of the season. I just love the creativity that lots of people put into their displays. I feel like growing up in lots of neighborhoods there's one house that goes like all out and does like a whole big giant thing and everyone thinks that house is the coolest. I one day will be that house, I hope. 
but for now I will just appreciate other places and houses that do that kind of thing. I loved the lighting in this place. It just felt so spooky, so creepy, so cheesy and perfect. And there were some places that were really, really like well done. Like this um, whole super realistic vampire looking statue guy, check him out. He is creepy and scary and just so well done. I really love it. There's this big haunted attraction every year in my city, but Cage really doesn't like that kind of thing. It's a lot of kind of drunk people, so probably not going to go to that, so this was the perfect replacement. And this, again, perfect, perfect setting for a horror movie. All these, like, wedding mannequins, could you not just see uh, a Chucky, a child's play taking place here? Ugh. And there was a hair flower wreath, which is super spooky and fun. I think Madame Absinthe on here has a tutorial on how to make your own, so that's really cool. The whole town was really, really awesome, and one of my favorite things is when they have these things, the sort of little tiny dioramas of it. It just, oh, they make me so happy. I love miniature things. I think miniature things, like, everyone has a special place for them in their heart. They're just so neat. Even if you're not, like, really into miniatures, you can, you can appreciate, like, a good tiny town, I think. We were off to explore more of the ghost town. There was a caravan that I thought was really cool with all sorts of beautiful things inside. It reminds me of Stardust and there was fortune telling machines that was really lovely. There was a bottle house uh, where there were all these glass bottles built in the wall which just made the most incredible beautiful light. There was a big abandoned school bus that was very spooky and fun to walk around. I felt like a ghost when I got to explore it. It was just a really wonderful day to spend the afternoon to explore all these almost horror movie looking locations in this ghost town. One of the spookiest things was this dentist office. This mannequin, I'm sure, has seen better days. And the floral arches were just incredible. We had to get going, and by the time we got to our campsite, it was quite dark. We just had time to make a fire, spread out our blankets in the car, and snuggle up into bed for the evening in. We roasted some hot dogs for dinner, and after that, we made marshmallows and tea. And right behind where we parked our car was this giant lake with all these little crawfish that you could only see at night. There were so many of them and I'd never seen one in person, so Cage and I went exploring for those and to just look at all the spooky nighttime creatures. That felt really fun and like a lovely way to spend our evening. When we woke up, it was perfect and foggy and misty in the morning and we got to finally see our campground that we had found at night and how beautiful it was in the morning. The lake was incredible with the reflective water and we just got to sit there and watch the dragonflies flit across the water while the mist rolled over the mountains and I just felt like I was in a fantasy novel. Once we had a bit of breakfast at our campsite, we were ready to drive out to try to pick our apples. And gosh, this was a lot harder than I thought it would be. The first place we went was called Davison Orchards. Originally, I didn't think we could go there because I thought it was closed. It's also like an hour away, but it just looked so cool and the sign said that they were open so we were like, oh my god, let's let's drive out, let's do it, whatever. When we showed up, they had no apple picking, but they did have a lovely, lovely pumpkin patch and they said that their apple picking would be open tomorrow, so to come back tomorrow. So we figured whatever. We looked at all the lovely pumpkins, there were so many gorgeous pastel ones, had a nice snack, coffees, and wandered around the farm. We saw that they had this animatronic pumpkin band that was very, very cute. I am definitely not a dancer, but I have fun and that's what counts. Nearby they also had some very very cute goats, so we got to say hello to them. They also had like little a little feeding station, but we didn't have very much change, so we figured when we'd come back tomorrow we'd come back with more change and be able to feed the goats. We had a tiny bit of quarter, so I managed to feed the goats a teeny tiny bit and they were very sweet. And there was a little tree house I got to explore with a slide and below it there was a whole set of pumpkin thrones that I got to pose on and take one of my favorite Polaroids ever, I believe. Um, it was a lot of fun to get to feel like pumpkin royalty and sit there with Cage. Then nearby they had a little 
rubber ducky dispenser next to some water pumps so we could race our ducks. I was able to do it quite well the first time, but then when we ended up doing an actual race, I completely failed and like drowned my duck or something because Cage completely won the second one. There were also all these extra ducks left at the end. We took ours home and an extra one and now they live in the car and are our little co-pilots which is very nice. Nearby they also had these cows made out of I don't know what type of metal and a little rope swing with a tire on it so even though we couldn't apple pick we had a nice time also checking out their little store. It was very like Pinteresty but cute and I got a candle. So we figured we'd drive out and try to visit another farm. On our way over to the orchard we had driven by what looked like a big corn maze and sort of graveyard church building so we decided to drive back the way we came and try to explore it. When we showed up the museum-y thing itself was closed but close by there was a massive willow tree which is one of my absolute favorite types of tree felt incredibly spooky and it was right by a pond which just felt absolutely magical and behind it there was this corn maze which officially said it was closed but there was no like gates or anything so we just kind of went through it was my first time ever being in a corn maze and it was so cool uh cage and i felt like we were ants or like little bugs like in regular grass. It was amazing. I don't know how I've gone my whole life without ever going into one, but um, it just felt really, really special. I had watched Children of the Corn for the first time ever uh, this year, so I felt like any moment he who walks behind the rose could uh, show himself or something. I don't know. It was a lot of fun. I can totally see now why corn fields are a great spot for horror movies. We didn't have a map, so we tried to not go very far and keep track of our turns so we wouldn't get lost, but we still managed to get somewhat lost, but eventually found our way out. I think that corn mazes are one of my new favorite autumn traditions, and I can't wait to go to them every year. I plan to already go to one coming up next week, so I'm super excited. Once we were done in there and found our way out, we ended up walking behind this old historic church that was bolted shut and this there was a small graveyard behind it. Graveyards are one of Cajun Mai's favorite spots for picnics, so we set up our little vegan charcuterie boards there. Everything is vegan cheese and meat and strawberries and pickles and things like that. I absolutely loved how foggy and almost rainy it was out. It would occasionally sprinkle and it just felt the perfect amount of wind with like the sound of birds cawing in the background and our very yummy food. I love eating picnics with Cage. It's one of our favorite dates to do and doing it in a graveyard just feels like an extra spooky special way to bond. And then close by, there was another sort of animal pasture situation. There were goats and lambs that were very sweet, um, a bunch of chickens running around. Overall, just a really cute place. Then we were back on the road and we decided to try to drive to another orchard. Um, we had messaged them on Instagram and asked if they were open and that we were coming from like six hours away. And they said, yes, like we're open, we'd love to see you. So we headed over thinking that we could pick some apples. The guy was so confused when we showed up. We were like, hey, we are here to pick apples. He's like, what? What? No. Um, basically, they just had a tiny bit of fruit to sell and we were super confused. And then we ended up driving to three other orchards and they were all also closed because it was Tuesday and apparently everywhere there is open on Wednesdays only. It was almost comical the amount of times that we tried and were ejected to pick apples that day. A nice scenic shot of our beautiful pears. Drove six hours to a U-Pick farm that we could not pick fruits and we got a nice basket of pears. <laughs> Fantastic. Either way, it was really lovely to drive through the rain we were listening to The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and we had also previously finished Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. Some of my favorite stories on there are The Truth is a Cave in the Black Mountains, and Down to a Sunless Sea, and Click Clack the Rattlebag. Click Clack the Rattlebag is Cage's favorite. 
but Neil Gaiman has been one of my favorite authors since I was like 10 or 11 and read Coraline for the first time. So we figured, whatever, today was not our day to pick apples, so instead we went back to our campsite and behind it there were all these incredible trails. Since we weren't camping in a national park or anything, we were able to forage. There was an incredible amount of juicy red rose hips, tiny mushrooms, loads of moss, dried orange leaves, and so much cedar wood. It smelled, again, so much like cedar in that forest, and it was incredible to see all of the tiny cobwebs and feel the leaves crunching underfoot and just being able to tell that the season was coming soon. There was this tree of lost souls, <laughs> as in all these abandoned shoes, and the trail was just really lovely, home to so many different species of lichens, acorns, mosses, and different types of grasses that were just at the end of their lifespan. It was really, really incredible to see, and I think Cage really enjoyed having a forage around there, picking a couple of pieces of plants that were plentiful and only a couple from each area, you know, responsible foraging habits we, we try to use out here. It's so wonderful when you travel a little bit away from your home and you are able to see so many of the same but also so many different types of plants and flowers. We eventually got back to our campsite and it was perfectly in time for sunset so we were able to sit down together and just enjoy watching the sunset over this gorgeous incredible lake. The campsite was quite busy so we definitely weren't the only ones but we did remember a speaker this time so we were able to quietly play all this vintagey Halloween music and it just felt incredibly magical. The clouds out there were incredible and it was the perfect foggy weather. Back to our campsite, it was time to make our dinner. For tonight we had some instant noodles and leftover hot dogs still. It was really wonderful to sit by the fire together as the air becomes more and more crisp and cold. It just feels like the perfect time to snuggle, listen to music, and curl up together. There were so many bird calls that we could hear and the frogs chirping at night. It was really special. The fire was glowing and so warm and there's just nothing more romantic and magical in my opinion while the sky slowly changes colors around you and you watch the stars peek out. I got this beer and I feel like I need to learn my lesson that beers with fancy bottles never have that good of flavors. It's really pretty though. And then we roasted marshmallows and Cage is ridiculous and likes his burnt completely on fire and I'm a normal person and just roast mine slowly. And as we watch the fire slowly die out. It was time to retire in for the night. Again, we were in our cozy little bed, and this time I had a little bit more energy than Cade. He lied down and closed his eyes, and I got to read to us uh, from my book of Edgar Allan Poe stories. I read The Telltale Heart, and he really enjoyed it. When we woke up, it was even more rainy and foggy than the night before, and it felt incredibly special to wake up seeing all of the smoke and fog and condensation from the night before evaporate. The rain over the water felt incredibly special and we were able to stay toasty and warm in our warm layers together. We had to check out by 12 but we had woken up pretty early because we wanted to go apple picking, get it done, and then start heading home since we were quite a ways away. We did make some time to just sit by the water and quietly appreciate the campsite and say goodbye while it rained and we were able to just spend some quality time together. Then we walked around the lake and watched the rain fall, looked at the little spiders and said goodbye to all the little wildlife friends we had said hello to. Mostly dragonflies. There were a lot of dragonflies around that lake. The clouds hugging the mountains really low just felt so magical and special to see. And one of my favorite treats was seeing this enormous murder of crows or ravens. I think they're crows though. They 
there were so many of them and they were just kind of on the road as we were driving out saying goodbye so that was lovely we headed back to davison orchards which was the farm that had apple picking but open on wednesdays and this time we came prepared with lots of quarters to say hello and feed our friends that we had met the day before this white goat was so freaking cute one of my favorite things that i saw though was this other goat that was also white um or a ram eating a pumpkin and that was one of my absolute favorite things he was so cute i loved his little beard and his big old horns and his little snuffling at the pumpkin he's just oh so adorable and we met a really sweet little siamese cat so friendly really really sweet nobody knew the cat's name i asked around a lot but nobody knew however they were an incredibly sweet loving little cat and i hope they're doing well whatever their name is the leaves were turning red there and it just made me smile so much it felt like the perfect 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 welcome into fall so the way that apple picking worked there is that you get on a tractor and they drive you out and you get to look at all the orchards and then they bring you to the one where the apples are ripe and you can pick them there but there were so many apples oh my god i hadn't been to an orchard before but this was incredible i'd also never seen a pumpkin patch but it was my absolute dream come true. It just felt like the most festive, festive thing in the world. My heart was glowing. All these sunflowers were dying and it just looked so spooky and incredible. There was a scarecrow. It was just my absolute fall fantasy come true. I felt like I was in a storybook. And the apples, oh my God, there were just miles and miles and miles of apples. They were so delicious looking and there were so many varieties. When we finally got dropped off, we got to pick um, Royal Gala and Macintosh apples. It was super fun. I had a delightful time. The apples were so ripe and so delicious, and they came off the tree so easily. I'm so excited to make caramel apples and apple cider and all sorts of different delicious things out of them. For my first time picking apples, this was incredibly magical. It was absolutely worth the wait. I couldn't believe that I'd never done this before. Well, I could because it's like six hours from where I live, so it like makes sense. But just, it blew my mind. I had so much fun. I felt like I was in a storybook. It was the most perfect way to spend the autumn day. And that was that. We got our apples sorted, bought some apple juice from the store, said thank you to everyone, said goodbye to the kitties and the animals, and then we were on our way back home. When we were at the orchard, the guide had showed us how with the Royal Gala apples, if you just shine them a little bit with a clean shirt or a clean towel, they would shine just so beautifully. Like they look like they're out of a fairy tale. It's absolutely crazy. So when I got home, I was sure to shine all my apples and I got a couple of baskets ready. One of the baskets is just sitting in a cold room in my house. Uh, one of them went to my mom, some went to my coworkers, and some, very excitingly, were to be made into caramel apples. So one of my absolute favorite things to do is like late night bake, but it was probably like 11.30 or so. And vegan caramel apples are something that I just discovered that I could make this year. The recipe is a bit troubleshooty, but I will link it below. And as long as you let all the ingredients boil and then don't stir it, don't stir it at all until it reaches the temperature and then stir it quite a bit, you should be okay. I forgot about re-stirring it. So the first two apples I made turned out quite lumpy, but when they ended up being complete, they still tasted good, even though the first two looked weird, the rest of them looked really good. There's a lot of coconut cream in this, so it's deliciously like creamy. There's also a bunch of maple syrup and brown sugar and it tastes like the most delicious caramel. Salt is the best part of caramel in my opinion, so I always make sure to add a big amount of it. You want to make sure that you stay really consistent with the temperature when you're cooking caramel. You don't want to go like up and down, hot and cold, just keep it medium low as much as possible. The best thing I find about making caramel apples is the fact that your entire house just fills with this warm, delicious, bubbling smell and sound and it just is intoxicating the sign that you can tell autumn is finally arriving. The entire time while I was making caramel, I was watching Over the Garden Wall on my laptop, which is one of my absolute favorite shows and just such a classic for Halloween. I got my apples out of the fridge and got them dipped in the caramel. And you might be able to see that yes, the first two, I did not stir the caramel and they're kind of lumpy bumpy looking, but it's fine, they still taste really good. 
the last three or four or however many they were just had the most delicious brown incredible looking caramel the thing with these i don't know about regular caramel apples but these you do want to keep in the fridge because the caramel is quite goopy if it is at room temperature and one thing that i find really fun uh, that i've been doing lately is making little like vegan caramel candies out of the leftover caramel i just put it in these little silicone molds i would have used spooky ones but they are all currently in use in my freezer being used to make ice cubes so I settled on these little paw prints, but they're like little cute heart paw prints with like salted caramel in them. Oh my god, so cute. And they just live in my freezer, and I've just been snacking on these delicious little vegan salted caramel. So even if caramel apples aren't your thing, you can always just make like a pan of caramel. Or maybe you could use little baking cups, um, like the cupcake ones, something like that would probably work pretty well. This is how the caramel apples turned out. I am very proud of myself. It's quite, not to like pat myself on the back too much but it's like kind of hard to make caramel from scratch um at least for me i've uh, messed up this recipe multiple times so being able to get it right is always a delight anyway i really hope you enjoyed um coming along with me on this little vlog and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day night or whenever you're watching and are having a really good spooky season um hope to see you in the next one bye